Here's Marshal Jojo. Prepare to leave the house. Is it dangerous? Extremely. As an artist, you always want to challenge yourself more and more, and I always feel that if I don't feel nervous going into a film, then it's not really worth it for me. Start down the hall. From there, go. And that's when I get more creative and I come up with more inventive ways of dealing with parts of the story, and it becomes more of my style of film. Action! I wanted to tell a story set in World War II, which dealt with all of the things we're used to, but from children's perspective and with an imaginary Adolf. What's wrong, little man? I felt like if I was going to tackle this subject, I've got to make sure that it doesn't feel like every other World War II film. Meeting this girl shakes Jojo's worldview. You're not a Nazi. You're a ten-year-old kid who likes dressing up in a funny uniform and wants to be part of a club. I wanted to, well, I had to really dance a bit between this dramatic and comedic tone. What is she burning? What are you burning? She can't hear you. What are you burning? I'm not saying that, you know, I'm going to be able to change every single person with this film. But I do feel like it's an important film for our time right now because I don't think we can ever stop dealing with what happened in World War II. Some people might say, yeah, but that was so many years ago. It's not that many years ago. I know he's in there somewhere. The little boy who loves to play and thinks you invented chocolate cake. In the end, that's all you have. Hope. You know, I feel like in quite good company with films like The Great Dictator or Life is Beautiful, where it's poking fun at these people, but also trying to explain how serious this stuff is. I meant we'd need dogs, not actual German shepherds. Get them out of here! I just had to make sure that I wasn't letting that get the better of the story and water down the main message, which is we need to be more tolerant and spread more love and less hate. <laughs>